Okay, so in the previous video, we looked at some of the terminology. We looked at taking measurements and recording measurements in a table. What we're going to take a look in this video is some of the analysis we would do of the readings we've taken. So the first thing we often do is we'd calculate an average of our repeat readings. But we're also going to look at how we would analyze the reliability of our data as well. Now, how we calculate something called the uncertainty in our data. If, and what the uncertainty means is if we've got a certain measurement, how much higher or lower than that could it actually be? So typically, we would, for when we're timing something with a stopwatch, we state that the uncertainty is about 0.1 seconds. And that's mostly due to uh, we are, as humans, are fairly rubbish at using stopwatches, so we're not great at judging the start and end of things. But that introduces some uncertainty in there. So what we say is if we measure a time with a stopwatch, it could be 0.1 seconds higher than that. It could be about 0.1 seconds lower than that time. That's usually what we say. So if we have repeat readings from our experiment, we don't have to just guess at what the uncertainty is like I just did. If we have repeat readings, we can actually calculate uh, what the uncertainty is, and we do it using the range of our repeat readings. And what does that mean? Well, we take our biggest repeat reading, subtract the smallest repeat reading, that gives us our range, and we divide that by two to give us our uncertainty. The other thing that we do with our table of data is calculate an average. And the way we do that is we sum the values or add all the values together, and then we divide by the number of values. So let me take you through an example of uh, doing this. So let's say we measured the time of something, and we repeated that uh, th three times. So we've got three readings to give us our measurement. So to get the average, we'd add those three values together and divide by three. And that will give us uh, a number that has lots of decimal places and just keeps going. But our times were all two decimal places, so the average is quoted at two decimal places. That's our average. Our biggest repeat reading is 10.34. Our smallest repeat reading is 10.01. So the range is the difference between those, which comes out as 0.33. The uncertainty is half the range, so that's going to be 0.33 divided by 2, which comes out as 0.165. But when we're getting uncertainties, what we do is we round them to the nearest number, So, and we round them up to the nearest number. So the uncertainty came out as 0.165, but we're going to round that to 0.2 seconds. So actually, we can see that our uncertainty from this set of data is bigger than we would have predicted just saying it's 0.1. Okay, so that's an example. Let's do the same thing with an experiment that we've done. So, um, if we have uh, an experiment where we have a pendulum, and we're gonna change the length of that pendulum and measure the time for 10 time periods. So let's say 100 millimeters gives us these three times. So remember our average, we add together the three data sets, divide by three, and then we round it to the same number of decimal places as our readings. So in this case, two decimal places. Our range is the biggest minus the smallest, uh, which we can see here is 6.34 minus 6.12. And then our uncertainty is going to be that range divided by two. Okay, so uh, then the length 400 millimeters gives these three times. So we're going to repeat the same process again. We can calculate the average by summing them and dividing it and then rounding to the right number of decimal places. We can do the range by doing the biggest one minus the smallest one. And we can get the uncertainty from dividing that by two and rounding up to the nearest number. So 0.115 is gonna round up to 0.2 seconds. And what that says is that the average time, the 12.71 could be plus or minus 0.2. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use our calculations to comment on the accuracy and reliability of those two measurements. So, 
for our 100 millimeter time period, we should have got a time of 6.34. And the 400, we should have got a time of 12.49. Those are the true values that we should have found. But we didn't actually measure those numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the difference between the true value and our measurement. So the difference just means subtracting the two. So uh, for our 100 millimeter, that's our difference. For our 400 millimeter, that's our difference. So we can see the numbers that we've come up with are different. Okay, so we can use those numbers to comment on which value is more accurate. So the 100 millimeter time period is 0.11 seconds from the true value. The 400 is 0.32 seconds. Therefore, the 100 millimeter time period is more accurate. That's how we comment on accuracy. In terms of reliability, we're going to look at the range. So the 100 millimeter time period had a range of 0.22. The 400 millimeter had a range of 0.23. So the 100 millimeter time period is slightly more reliable, but basically their reliability is pretty much the same. But the 100 millimeter is very slightly more reliable. And that concludes this video looking at ranges, averages, and uncertainty, and how we can use them to comment on accuracy and reliability.